Hello and welcome to another edition of Sun Dragon Tips and Tricks. I'm Rebecca. I'm the owner of Sun Dragon Art and Fiber in downtown Brevard, North Carolina. Coming to you from my house today because it's Monday, is my day off, and that's when I film this. So I thought that we could do another one of our intro videos onto certain styles of accessories or garments. We've done part one of shawls, we've done part one of sweaters. I thought today we could do part one of cowls. Now, it's very, I'm calling all of these part one because I'm sure there's more things to talk about. There's more styles than what I'm gonna bring up. Um, I'm not gonna do a whole bunch. I'm gonna do about three today. Same thing with the sweaters and the shawls. There's always more we can talk about. So let me know in the comments what you would like me to talk about. The interesting thing about cowls is I decided to look up an official definition and I couldn't find one, which I thought was fascinating. When you look up the word cowl, it will talk about maybe a cowl neck uh, in terms of a sweater or woman's garment, which is usually a loose drapey neck. It was also talking about cowls in terms of monks. And that's the hoods that they would, they would wear in their monk garments. And when they put them down, they kind of gather around their necks. In the knitting and crochet world, when we use the term cowl, we are usually referring to something not unlike what I'm wearing right now, something that goes around the neck that keeps you, your neck warm or is a stylish garment. But what I like to think of when I think of a cowl is it's something that won't fall off. So you can wear a scarf or you can wear a shawl like a scarf, but you gotta wrap that around and there's a chance it could come undone. A cowl is usually a throw it over your head and go, and it's not about to fall off or unwrap. So it can be very convenient for many of these reasons. They're usually smaller, not always. I'll show you some today that aren't, but they're usually smaller and they're usually easier projects sometimes. So let's go into a couple of the shapes you might see and why I do or don't like them. <laughs> and um, doesn't mean I don't make them, I make them all, but there are some that I like better than others and you might be able to guess which one I do like better. We'll see. So uh, let's get to it. So again, when I use the word cowl, I'm basing it on the idea of a loose neck covering. It's usually not super tight, but it could be around the neck. This is part one, because I'm sure there's other things we will end up talking about. And we're gonna look at three today. Straight, infinity, and triangular. The most basic, the easiest one to make is one you might find, I don't even know what names you're gonna find for these, but I would tend to refer to them as straight or rectangular ones. They have this kind of shape. They sit hopefully flat across. They don't have much shaping to them. If you knit it in the round or once you've constructed it, this is what it will look like. It will go in a circle and it'll have a flat top and bottom. To back that up a bit. So knit in the round, you're gonna cast on, we'll do orange for our cast on, you would cast on in a circle here at the bottom, place a marker, and you would knit in a circle until you're done. Simple shaping. You can use lots of decorative stuff in this, but oftentimes there will be very simple shaping. And then when you get as high as you want it to get, you bind off. Now, if you're gonna knit it flat, There's a couple different things you can do. You might cast on here, knit that direction and bind off, or you could cast on along the long edge, knit upwards and bind off. Either way, if you knit it flat, you're going to have to sew the ends together. To get this from this, If you don't knit it in the round, you are going to have to sew those two ends together to create your circle. This is one of the easiest ones to do, the straight or rectangular one. It is easy, minimal shaping. The downside of this type of cowl, it very rarely stays in that shape around your neck. 
so often it will droop down. And sometimes that means that you see the inside rather than the outside around your neck. So if you have fancy color work and stuff, you might not see it. It might get covered up because of the way that it falls around your neck. It's just something to keep in mind. If it stays upright, it's probably some really stiff material that's not very comfortable. Keep that in mind. If you have some kind of knitting on this that's really basic and, and this, both sides are the same, perhaps, who cares then, right? So variation on a theme here that I figured we'd take a quick peek at is something called an infinity scarf. The idea, so we break this down, a scarf is usually something that just goes around your neck and hangs down. But when you combine those two ends, then it becomes a loop. It's an, it doesn't end, it doesn't have ends. So it's a big loop. The benefit of this one is you can wear it two different ways, at least. So you could wear it as a single loop, or you can double it so it's tight around your neck. Very stylish to either wear the long way or the short way. Very similar though in construction to this up here. So it could be made in the round, or it could be sewn or seamed when you're done. You have a giant loop, infinity, it keeps going and going and going. There are no ends. A scarf usually has set ends. Looks like a little happy face. Then there is my personal favorite, the bandana or the triangular cowl. And oftentimes this is the look you would get It's the look you would get if you took a triangular shawl and wrapped it around with the point hanging down and wrapped it around. Like a triangular shawl, you would have the ends of the shawl hanging down on either side. But instead, you have what is essentially when it lays flat, this is what it looks like on. Here's a little bit of a potential trying to show you both sides when it's laying flat. Now, some might say that's not a triangle, that's a trapezoid, but it has that, that point of a triangular shawl. The backside is usually much thinner and either bends or goes straight across, but it gives you a nice settled look. It gives you a look that even if it drapes a little bit, most of the patterning, most of the patterning of the shawl is seen and this one when it falls down and you don't see a lot of it the bandana cowl tends to it tends to lay better there is more shaping involved now you can knit it in the round often when it's in the round Sometimes you do shaping and then join it at the very end, or sometimes you start with in the round and shape the end later. Like the other cowls, they could be in the round, they could be flat. I've drawn two examples here of triangular or bandana cowls that were knit flat. So these guys are knit flat and then they have to be seamed. And we're gonna show you how to do that. Oftentimes, for a bandana cowl that takes this shape and then is seamed, oftentimes the cast on is somewhere in the middle and you knit out, often with a center spine. It grows, so we could say with our purple here, there might be some kind of center spine and it grows in both directions or there's some way that you're adding to it to do this kind of shaping. And again, oftentimes, the bind off is at the outer edge. To make this into a bandana or triangular cowl, these small one sides are the ones that have to be knit together. They have to be pulled towards each other and seamed together in the back. That is the most customary way that this happens. And so what you have when you're done, if we say here is our center spine and our triangular point, 
these two ends when they come together, it will often, sometimes it will have a sloped shape, sometimes it will just be straight. But these are the, the two ends that meet in the back. Those green sides are now right here. And it has made whoop, a triangular cowl. This one's really fun. Believe it or not, you can knit a rectangle and make it into a triangular cowl. And so first let's go over the most customary way that this is made is we're going to cast on on the short edge instead of having really long rows to knit cast on here and start zigzagging back and forth the knitting direction will go up and at the other end you bind off now here is the crazy part that can turn this into a triangular cow this will have minimal amounts of shaping so if you want one that is super easy in terms of construction this is the way to go. There's no shaping. The complication, which isn't that complicated if you wrap your head around it, the complication is how to sew it together. Here's the crazy part. We are going to sew, to make it into a triangular cowl, you want to sew the short end, bring that down here, and sew it starting at the corner, however far up it will go, to the edge of the long side. And I recommend just what I did here, lay it out and take it around to the opposite corner. Now how that will look, if we take our cast on edge here. So if we take the cast on edge and we know that this edge is gonna wrap around and meet itself again, that top part is gonna come down here. It's going to come boop, like that. That's how they're going to meet. And there's your triangle cowl. I'll show you an example in our next segment. All right, so I'm going to show you a few kinds of cowls that I've made. And I went to the shop today and I brought some stuff home. And of course I threw in the infinity scarf slash cowl, what have you, after I went to the shop. So I don't have a good example of that one, but you can kind of imagine if it's longer, you can flip it around. If you want to see me wearing one of those, write it in the comments, I'll make a filming of that later. So let's see. One of the oldest ones I've made that I would define, so I'm a little tag on it, that I would define as a straight or rectangular one, but it's, you know, you can have it be really high and then it will pool around your neck. And isn't that wonderful? This is the cowled and frosty morning. I don't remember who made it. I'll try to put it in the comments or the description, but it is what I would call a box, a rectangle, a loop, but it is straight and it just piles around your neck. Now, if you make all these layers, nice and tall and then it stacks and it's very comfy and cozy. But again, you might see some more of the inside than the outside, but you know, it's just about the color. So it's great. This one, oh, I'm trying to remember the, the name of this one and I can't. This one was very, very fun to make. And again, I'll try to put it in the comments because I will dig around the internet and I'll find it. This one has these lovely textured stitches in it. It's again, it's, it's a super bulky yarn like the other one was, and you have these lovely textured stitches, but they're not textured on the inside. I mean, there's something going on, on the inside, right? So, but you can already see as I'm holding it up, like technically it's flat, but even as I'm holding it up, it's starting to pucker and I've locked it, but you know. So when I put this one on, it might stay up and show off its texture or, you know, with where it might start doing this. And then all that fun texture is for naught. And some people say, well, how do I keep it from curling? It's kind of hard. I can prop it up and hope that people will see the yummy texture. But unless I want to keep pulling it up all day, there's a chance they won't see it. But right now that's kind of staying up on its own, right? Yay. <laughs> so, Nice little short flat one. Ta-da!
This one I think was called the Mountain View Cowl and this was really fun to make. Look at all that. This was stranded color work and nice and complicated. It's like a piece of art. A lot of flat cowls like this, straight, flat, however you want to call them. They make a rectangle when you lay them down. This is patterned all the way around. They are works of art, especially if you're going to hang them on the wall. But if I wear it, we lose some of that. Like I can take a picture of this, or you can see it if I turn to the side. It's great, but in the end, it might start sagging down like this, and then you see the inside. So you have to decide if that's worth it, or if you want to find a creative way to make sure that this part shows, you know. I have another one here I brought from the shop. This one's fun because it's in the round and then part of it was made flat. So it's got a split in it, which means you could, it gives you a lot of different options of how to wear it. There's a whole level of cowls we could get into that have different shaping with them. So you can wear it when it's split over your shoulder, you could wear it folded, all kinds of things. This is the split ribs cowl. And it's got all kinds of different texture to it. And again, it's got fun texture, but it's okay if it's covered up. So it's okay if it, if it piles on your neck like this, right? So I didn't bring home any infinity ones, but those will be like this, but longer. And you could sensibly wrap it around your neck a couple times. If we get to another cowl video, I will try to show that off. I'm going to show you some of my favorites in terms of triangle ones. So there's the one I started in today. This one is ashes and soot. And it has a center spine that it grew out from. I wish I had a picture of it. You can check out my Instagram. You might see a picture of it before I sewed it together. But it's seamed in the back. So you can see there's a thicker part here where I seamed it. It was flat and it was a larger piece that I, that I brought the smaller ends together and it was seamed. And again, I love triangle ones because they cover more of the area you might want to keep warm in the winter. There's cool texture on a lot of the ones that we have in the shop and you can turn it under if you want to. You can let it do what it's going to do, which is want to sag, but you still have usually the outside edging that's going to look really pretty. So it sits better on the neck and on the shoulders. It can. So there's this one. And one I want to hold on to because it's that great shaping I just showed you. Very popular one that's bigger. These can get really big. This is the Shift Cowl by Andrea Mowry. And it is started right back here and grows in a triangular shape. Only the orange part of this is where it started and it got bigger. And the cast off edge on this one actually is the corner down here. So, and then it was seamed together. So this part where the colors are really different is where it was seamed. And I did kind of a, a different mattress stitch so there's not a thicker seam on this one. But again, throw it on and go. And again, the back is where it started. And this one, the way she did the shaping, the cast off, the bind off edge is not, back up over here a little bit, it's not the whole thing. It's actually only over here. So that's what I love about pattern writers is they will come up with really cool ways to shape these guys. But this, again, if I want to, I can curl it under so the underside doesn't show as much and it can do its loose drapey thing and we can have a bottom part that shows off what's going on. And we see a whole lot of pattern. And it doesn't get stuck. If the pattern was only up here, like a straight one, some of it might be lost. Very fashionable though. So, variation on a theme. That was Andrew and Mowry. This one has, these are, both done with a really cool, ah, so I try not to lose everything here, slip stitch technique, what I call bubbles. This one's got bubbles and the bubble switch and color changing yarn makes it really cool. This is up by Ambo O'Brien's called the Kentia Cowl. And it was a giant kind of trapezoid that got seamed as you bound off in the back. But it makes the back, again, has is thinner up here and it kind of makes a big huge triangle that has been folded over together. Point in the front 
makes it a triangular cowl or a bandana cowl. This one's a little bit of a tighter fit. And again, I could fold this under or I could leave it up. And if any of you watch the sideshow, you know I fiddle with these constantly to try to make them hang right as I see myself on camera. But stays in place, comfy. I get compliments on this. I tell them I made it and they say, do you sell them? And I say, no, you can make your own. <laughs> so the last one I wanna show you is made that fun way I showed you last of it's it, it, this this is a cowl really big and thick right made from one giant ball of Noro Ito which is 200 grams 400 yards it was my car knitting for Christmas a couple years ago when I actually traveled for Christmas I got it back all the way up here so you can see the little, the it's a giant triangle. It goes way down, way down to here. But it was knit flat and it was a giant rectangle before I sewed it together. So if you can see, there's kind of ribbing on here, right? But again, I'll put it on, back on in a second. Let's see if I can find an edge to show you. So here is, always fun doing this on camera. If you look between here and here, this is straight knitting and ribbing. And if you follow it down, you can see where that straight ribbing hits the side like this. But the part where that point was, when I put it back on, if we hold it to the side, from where my fingers are right here over to the edge, this is the bottom part of that rectangle. And then if we follow, I could do it without dropping it. <laughs> if we follow, see where that orange part is there? This is the edge right here. So only look from here to here between my fingers. If we can follow this and I just keep turning and I just keep turning and following the knitting that I did and I just keep it coming There's the other end right there. It was sewn to the side, because if I just keep turning, we're gonna see, remember that orange patch right there? That this is the bottom where I started. I sewed it to the side. And if I put it out like this, without dropping it again, it's almost a poncho. If it was wider, it would become a poncho. But since it's not, since it's a little tighter, it just has this wonderful layered effect around your neck. And again, this part right up to here, that's the straight knitting, but it pulls around your neck. This is one short end. The other short end has been sewn to the side right here. Doesn't have to be this thick to have this effect. You can do this with, narrow, with a narrower beam of fabric that goes around and only maybe comes to right here. We have ones in the shop that use one skein of super bulky yarn that's 100 grams and it's just this cute little cowl, but it has a V to it because of how you sew it together. So I hope you've enjoyed this brief look at a few different types of cowls. Please let me know what else you wanna look at in the comments. Um, if it's more cowls, if it's getting back to sweaters, Anything that you would like to see a video on, this channel is growing by leaps and bounds and I'm loving that. If you like this, you may also like my assistant and I, we banter over on the Sun Dragon Sideshow. If you wanna see all the projects that we're working on and inspiration for new ideas, for things we have in the shop, check out the Sun Dragon Sideshow. If everyone who has subscribed here subscribes over there, our numbers will explode. It'll be wonderful and everybody wins. So. <laughs> anyway, let me know what you want to do next, what you want to see next, what you want to learn about knit or crochet. All these shawls I showed off today are knit, but most of these styles, if not, I mean, all of them really can be done in crochet too. And it's either finding a writer, a pattern writer who has done this or making it up yourself. It's really fun. I know people of all different uh, types of crafters. Some want the patterns and some want to freestyle it themselves. A lot of this can help you out with both, with either searching Ravelry 
or making it up on your own. And so let me know what else you'd like to see a video on and may your crafting be filled with joy and confidence. We'll see you next week. Bye-bye.